Hey, Shalom. This is the brother Abad. You're back here once again. Before I get started, like always, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rechah Kodash, the bonus of my teachers, the elder apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. The word that I want to go into today is um the word timorous. All right? I'm going to say that again. Timorous. Uh, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 11. It reads, For wickedness condemned by her own witness is very timorous, and being pressed with conscience always forecasteth grievous things. Right? So, the scripture is saying, um, when someone does something wicked or possesses a wicked nature um and they get and they after they do it um they start to fear feel timorous about it um it's because their conscience is condemning them now your conscience is your own witness against you right now when you go into this word timorous before I, um because I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back up to the first verse in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter uh, 17. But before I do that, let's get the word timorous in the etymology, the etymon online. All right, timorous means fearful, fear, dread, apprehension, anxiety. Right. So let's read that again and let's let's replace temper temperous tem timorous with fear, fearful, or being scared. Uh, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 11. For wickedness condemned by her own witness is very fearful, is very scared, and being pressed with conscience always forecasteth grievous things. Now, let's stop and think on that for a second, right? Because we, us that's in this truth that have woke, woken back up to our nationality, and we're serving Yahweh Hashem to the best of our ability, best of our ability, day in and day out. When we do something that we know isn't pleasing to Yahweh Hashem our conscience commit, um, our conscience immediately um, wit is witness against us. All right, and we start to, um, you know, feel a certain way in the spirit. Right, you feel convicted. That's the word I'm looking for. You feel convicted. And then when you go out, you know, and you go about your daily routine, you have a fearful spirit on you now because you have been taken away from the spirit of peace, the spirit of being still, the, the, the spirit of grace and mercy, the spirit of confidence, all right, that is in the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. Why do I say that? Let's get uh, uh, the book of 2 Timothy real quick. Let's go over to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For Yahweh Bahashem Yahusha have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Right? And when you commit wickedness or you do something that's off, um, you're not acting in a sound mind. And because of that, the rest of your day or the rest of your um you know, going about throughout the earth, you're not gonna um be behaving with a sound mind, okay? <clears throat> right? He says, the spirit of fear is not the spirit of the Most High. So what is it the spirit of? Where fear, being fearful and being scared, comes from the world. And when you participate in the lust of the world, all right, the, 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 the wickedness of the world, you're going to um, reap what you have sown, all right? And if you're reaping into the flesh, you're going to have a fearful spirit upon you because that is of the flesh, right? Um, that's why you'll see guys... You know, relying on the the gun, all right, as their protection. Relying on uh, carnal means to protect them. Dude may have a house full of five dogs, two pit bulls, a Rottweiler, right? Because they're scareful, they're fearful, all right. Living in a house with all these alarms, and um, you know, you got lasers in, in your house, uh, on the floor, all type of shit, right? Because you live a very fearful life, but. When you look at the when you look at the, the way these people live in society today, 
it's because they're wicked. It's because they um, practice the deeds of the wicked. So they live a very fearful life, right? To further to further bring the point that I'm trying to uh, press home with, um, press home with. Let me get um. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> let me see what I want. Bear with me one second. <clears throat> this is yeah. So let me get Matthew chapter sixteen, and let's uh. Read verse 25 straight to the point. It says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Right? And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Now, why did the Lord say that? Because a lot of people are scared of death. They're very, very fearful of death. Now, the closer you get to the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh and you get to know the spirit and rest in the spirit, the less fearful you become of death. But when you're abiding in the world and the pleasures of the world and the lust of the world and the wickedness of the world, the more you become fearful of death and you don't want to lose your life because you're afraid of what's on the other side. You don't have the confidence. You, go, you don't have the faith that on the other side is the spiritual realm where you're going to meet your creator. You're scared about what awaits you because you know that you've been living a wicked life. But a, a, but a follower of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, a righteous servant, a saint, they're not scared to be called up to the spiritual realm because they know they're going to meet their creator and they know what's waiting for them at the judgment seat. All right. They have confidence. They have faith that they've been doing their best in the flesh to not sow so much to the flesh, but to sow more to the spirit. But when you're not doing that, your conscience is going to convict you. Right. But see, a wicked person, when their conscience convicts them, they don't repent and turn to the spirit and power. Yahweh Shemel Shah. They turn to vices of the world. They turn to sm uh, smoking cigarettes, smoking weed, drinking a lot, having a whole bunch of random, unorderly uh, sex, all right, doing perverse sexual actions. They, they find any type of distraction or comfort in the flesh to keep their conscience, their mind busy on the pleasures of the flesh so they don't have to deal with what they're doing in the spirit. That's, that's offending the spirit of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah, right? So let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 1. Now let's go up to verse 1. Bear me one second. <clears throat> so verse 1 read, verse one reads, For great are thy judgments, and cannot be expressed. Therefore unnurtured souls have erred. All right, how do you, how, what is an unnurtured soul? You need nourishment. What is the nourishment? The scriptures, the word, John 6 and 63, the washing of the word, the renewing of your mind, the renewing of your spirit. All right. We have to come into this truth as babies, be born again, be renewed and nurtured, nurtured in the milk, right? Nurtured in the honey, nurtured in the bread of life, nurtured in that wine, that spiritual wine. You have to be nurtured through the, through the wisdom and knowledge in the word of Yahweh Shemel Bashar. The true wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Verse 2. For when for when unrighteous men thought to oppress the holy nation, they being shut up in their houses, the prisoners of darkness, and fettered with the bonds of a long night, lay their exile from lay their exiled from the eternal providence. And see, that's what wickedness have gotten us. Alright, that's what Disobeying Yahweh Bashmi Rasha, disobeying our Creator has gotten us. We're we're the prisoners of darkness. We we are in the bonds of the of a long night. The scriptures call our bodies chains of darkness. All right? We're exiled from the eternal providence, right? Verse 3 it says, For while they supposed to lie hid in their secret sins, they were scattered under a dark veil of forgetfulness, being horribly astonished. And troubled with strange apparitions, right? And um, you can also apply that to what? Us being scattered throughout the earth, through, through the four corners. The scriptures say a veil has covered the earth. And we forgot what? The forgetfulness is what? We forgot our nationality. We forgot our power. We forgot our savior. We forgot the only way that we have a chance out of being in, being in captivity and coming back unto the grace of your, grace and mercy of Yahweh Shemel Right? Verse 4, 
for neither might the corner that held them keep them from fear. But noises as of waters falling down sounded about them, and sad visions appeared unto them with heavy countenances. Right? Oh, uh, let me let me drop down a little bit. Verse nine. Let's go to verse nine. It says, "For though no terrible thing did fear them, yet being scared with beasts that passed by and hissing of serpents, they died for fear, denying that they saw the air, which could of no side be avoided." Now. The book of the book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter seventeen, in itself, itself, um, is addressing you know um, the plagues of one one of the plagues of Egypt, the apparitions, all right, in the darkness, all right, and people being judged that night for not obeying what the Lord had said, all right, with the firstborns of the sons being taken away, all right, the Lord bringing terrors upon. The ancient Egyptians, all right, which were of the Hermetic uh, sea line. Um, but the reason why I applied Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, to our plight here, all right, um, being in the captivity is because when you disobey your power, all right, you, and you lead off to wickedness, you follow the ways of the serpent, you also are likened as a heathen, all right? So you, so the plagues of the heathen are now put upon you, right? And that's what we see. That's what we see. And these same plagues that happened in ancient Egypt are going to be brought back again, even even more, all right, as we approach the arrival of Yahweh Hamashiach, all right, in the latter days, okay? <clears throat> so I took a, you know, I kind of took a spiritual breakdown approach and apply wisdom of Solomon chapter 17 to us, you know, but really wisdom, wisdom of Solomon chapter 17 is going into uh, some of the plagues of ancient Egypt. But, you know, the gist of this lesson is the word timorous that you find here. All right. And how during that time, not only just the, uh, the ancient Egyptians, but also the Israelites, right, that didn't obey the Lord about putting the uh, blood of a lamb up over your doorpost outside your, your dwelling place. They also reap the judgments of losing, you know, their firstborn sons. All right. <clears throat> so you have to, you know, you have to um, abide in the spirit of Yahweh Shemel You don't want to live in a life of rebellion. All right. And being rebellious to your power because it's going to cause you to live a life of wickedness, and in turn, you're going to live a life of being timorous, being fearful, being scared at every corner, all right? And that's not the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Um, You know, but I want to read a scripture that is this, that does embody the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And it's over here in um, Psalm chapter 46, verse 1, right? It says, To the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song upon Alamoth. Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh is our refuge and strength, a very present. <clears throat> so I lost where I was at. Yeah, a very present help in trouble. So your strength and your help and your refuge is Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh right? But if you're not practicing the righteous acts, if you're not rehearsing the righteous acts, you don't know Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh so when you get so when you do something wicked or when you do something that's off and you're being convicted, your conscience is bearing witness against you, you're gonna seek help in carnal means. All right? And that ultimately is gonna uh, lead you to your destruction. All right? Whether that carnal means is a physical carnal weapon, or whether that carnal means is some type of vice or outlet that helps you forget about the pain or forget about the wickedness you just done, some type of temporary fleshly comfort or friends of the world, whatever it may be, it is not the refuge of Yahweh B'Hashem El Shah, all right? It's not the help of Yahweh B'Hashem El Shah. You're seeking help from the world, and that's what happens when you live according to the world, right? Verse 2, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, 
Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, say law, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the, king, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh of Jacob is our refuge. So though, the, you know, even prior to the nuclear missiles being shot off in World War III, whatever trouble happens on this earth, all right, you shouldn't act in the, um, the spirit of fear. You should be still and know that Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah is. And the only way to do that is to abide in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh That's why the scriptures say, Knowledge and wisdom should be the stability of thy times. What wisdom? Not the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world teaches you to sow into the flesh, which is going to sow into corruption, which is going to sow into you living a fearful life, which is going to sow into you seeking out carnal means, carnal means for help, refuge, instead of the covering of Yahweh Shemel The wisdom and knowledge, and, the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that's going to keep you stable, is the word of Yahweh Shemel all right, that we teach, that we've been teaching for years, beginning with our elder apostles of Great Millstone. So I wanted to do a quick les lesson touching on that word, timorous. Lord willing, this was edified. Until the next time I say, Shalom.